Hello friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of our fall DIY crafting. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing something that I've prepared, been preparing for for a little while. I have a brand new ephemera kit that is going to be released in my Etsy shop this week. It will actually be released on the same day that this video gets posted. Um, now this ephemera kit is not a digital kit. This is an actual ephemera kit that you will get sh sent to you in the mail. It includes a bunch of different like vintage inspired ephemera pieces, lots of fun little tags and tickets and full pages of print that as you can see here, um, both front and back. I've designed a whole series of ephemeras that you will be able to use in this project or for another project that you'd like to use. I wanted to show you what I am going to be doing with this kit. I'm actually going to be putting together a little mini journal using these Toastum Pop-Tarts or Pop-Up S'mores box. Now I love to use packaging when I do crafting or making journals or anything like that. Whenever I find a really cool package that I like, I will usually pick up two or three of them because I will um, turn them into something else. So I'm gonna be using this little package right here of Toastum Pop-Up S'mores. I actually bought three different ones, but the colors in this one worked the best with my color scheme in my new fall kit. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So make sure before you get started, you hit that little subscribe button, turn on your notifications bell and make sure it is set to all so you receive all of the notifications whenever we post future videos. All right, so let's get started with this project. Okay, so I love doing little projects like this. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put it together from beginning to end. However, I'm not gonna be decorating it or anything on the inside. This is something that you can customize later on. But this is a perfect little project that you can make as a gift. You could do some holiday themed ones, you could do seasonal themed ones, but I just think that this is just a fun little easy way if you want to start journaling and want to start making journals. This is a, a very inexpensive way to start out, um, especially when you're recycling and reusing product packaging like this right here. So I am going to be starting out by, I opened up my box like this and we're going to start cutting this apart. Now you can use your paper cutter if you have a paper cutter if you want. I am just going to use a metal edged ruler and a crafting knife. These little crafting knives you can get at the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to start by cutting um, these pieces down. Now I am just going to use kind of their folds as my guidelines um, so I know what to cut. So I'm literally, I want this front page to be the front page of my journal. So I'm going to just kind of cut this apart. And again, like I said, I'm just using their fold lines as my guides. You can go back in and clean them up later if you need to. And then I'm going to use obviously the back cover as the back cover of my journal. And then also save these little pieces because you never know, you might, um, this is kind of a scrap piece, but these other little pieces, you might be able to use them for something. Um, I try to just save all of the little pieces until I'm done with a project and then whatever I have left over, I'll just either scrap or I'll use it for another project. But um, I find that I very often end up going back and using all these little scraps to make clusters or to make charms or anything like that. I just, I like having them to, to use if I need them. All right, so I have my two covers my front and back cover cut out. And I also just made sure that they were the same um, size that I had cut them to be the exact same size. Sometimes when you're cutting, you could be cutting crooked or um, you might cut one a little larger than the other. So I just made sure that they were both exactly the same size front and back. And then I also have my side pieces, the side pieces to the box. Now, I wanna use one of these side pieces to make the spine of my journal. Usually a small journal like this, you don't wanna do a spine any bigger than about one inches. So I think I'm just gonna do um, two one inch strips out of this side piece. And again, you could do this um, with a cutter. I probably would, it would probably be easier for me to do this with a cutter cause I already have the measurements all right in the cutter. 
Um, but my cutting blade is not the sharpest right now and I want these edges to be nice and sharp. And we'll just cut a straight line. All right, so now we have our front and back covers and we have our spine that we're gonna double up. So the spine is an inch thick and I just made sure that everything was the same height. So now we can start putting these all together. Now what I'm gonna do first is I am going to glue these spine pieces together and I'm gonna be using my Fabrifix glue for that. So I'm actually gonna be gluing on the paper side, not the waxy side. And the reason I do that is only because I find that the glue sticks better to this more flat surface as opposed to that shiny surface. I'll be covering up that with some fabric anyhow, but I'm just doing white side to white side, and then I'm just pushing those two together and making sure that they line up nicely and just giving it a second to set. I use drafting tape to initially attach the spine to any of my journals. You can use um, really any type of tape you could use. You could use masking tape, you could use duct tape. I like this drafting tape because, I don't know if you can notice, but it is like reinforced on the inside. There's like little strips of fabric inside the tape itself. So it just helps hold the spines on a little bit better. All right, so I am just lining my front and back covers up. I'm facing them down, doesn't really matter, but I'm starting out with them face down. And I'm using my grid lines on my mat just to make sure that I have everything fairly straight. So I'm lining up my front cover, my middle spine, and then my back cover. And I'm leaving just a tiny little bit of space in between my um, covers and my spine. Now, once I have them kind of where I want them, I'm going to take my tape and I am just going to just carefully tape them down. I'm taping right to my mat only because it helps kind of hold everything in place. So just trying to be very straight. I'm not very straight on that one. Let me move this just a little bit. I moved it with my arm. And I just wanted to make sure that I have an even amount of tape on both the cover and the spine. So I want that, um, that seam to be right down the center of my tape. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take a bone folder. Now you could use any type of flat item that you have that you can um, press this tape down into your paper with. I have these bone folders it's not really bone, it's plastic, but whatever you have that has a flat edge. And I'm just, again, pushing this tape right down into my paper. And then I'm also going to take like the corner of my bone folder and kind of push right along the seams as well. So I know that that tape is sticking really nicely to the covers and the spine. Then I'm going to take my tape and peel it up all the way, flip it over and then take my pieces that were taped down to my mat and we're gonna just fold those right over onto the front side of my little journal here. Just like that. And the reason why I start on the inside as opposed to the outside is that I like to be able to cover these shorter strips of tape with another long piece of tape on the outside. Um, I've mentioned this before in other videos where I've shown how I make journals, um, but you're taking another strip of tape and you're just going right along and covering up those um, little flaps with a nice full strip of tape just like we did on the back. But this time we're having a nice smooth surface. We're not gonna get, um, we're not gonna get the tape bumps. 
where like the tape ends because we're covering it up with a nice smooth surface of tape on the outside. And again, just like we did on the inside, we're gonna smooth that tape out with our bone folder, go right down the center seam and push that tape right down into the seam. And again, we're gonna just pull our tape up, lift it up, flip it around, and then push the tape back down on the inside of our little journal book. All right, so now we have, we can go ahead and start bending these covers. You wanna bend it just a little bit, just so you have a nice crease. Bend it. And that's why you leave a little bit of a space in between the covers and the spines, so that way you can easily bend it. So here is the base of our little mini journal that we have here. So I have three different vintage style papers that are included in this ephemera kit. Now all of them are from original vintage either wallpapers or wrapping papers and I've just digitally enhanced them slightly and altered the colors slightly just so that they would kind of coordinate with each other a little bit better. And they're all kind of like a fall theme. So I'm just trying to decide which ones I want to include. So I'm gonna use um, two different papers. I'm gonna use one for the front cover and then one for the back cover. The, the easiest way I find to attach the front and back inside covers without having to do a whole lot of measuring is to just glue this down and then cut around it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a little bit more of my Fabrifix and I'm gonna go over my front cover with my Fabrifix glue on the inside. And I'm just going to align my front cover here. And I'm going right to that seam of my spine, right over my tape. And then again, I'm just being generous with my Fabrifix glue here because I wanna make sure that sticks down really well. I don't want it popping up. And I also want all the edges and corners really well um, stuck down. Okay, so then once I have my glue, I want to take my paper that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna use this one right here with the, the mushrooms. And I'm going to just take that paper and I'm, I'm folding up my front cover from the spine a little bit because I'm going to, I wanna just place this paper just to that spine. I'll, be, I'll still be able to open and close the book without it rubbing. So now we're just gonna push that paper right down in. Again, you can use your bone folder just to make sure it's stuck down really good. And we can flip it over and again, use our bone folder to push that cover out over our paper. Now you see there's a black and white side on this one, which I intentionally did that. So that way it just gave an option to, I mean, you could color this in with some watercolors, whatever. Um, but, all right, so now that we have that stuck on there really nicely, we can go ahead and cut this paper off using our, cover as a guide. Again, you could just use scissors if you wanted to. You don't have to use this crafting knife. I'm just using the crafting knife because I find that it's a little bit easier and cleaner. Get a nice, clean, straight cut when I use it. All right, so we're gonna do the top and the bottom. And again, I'm saving these extra little pieces because I'm sure we can use it in something else. And then we're also going to do the side. So we're just trimming this down to match the cover. There we go. All right, so now we have our cover and we have our nice inside cover all covered like that. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing to the back as I did to the front with a different one of my papers. I'm going to use this one right here. All right, so I have my um, inside covers all covered with the paper that I want to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my spine with some fabric that I have picked that I think will work good with my color scheme. I'm doing very fall colors with this little mini journal. So I found this like pretty leaf 
print in these really pretty orangey colors and brown colors. And so what I wanna do is I want to wrap this spine with my fabric. Now how I do that is I make sure that I have at least a strip of fabric that is gonna cover two times the length of my book plus a little at the end. All right, now I wanna make sure that I'm not getting too thick of a piece. So what I am doing is I'm taking my actual um, cover and I'm gonna just set it right on top of my fabric here, lining it up with one side of my fabric, this side right here. And then we're just gonna make a little mark. I have some, um, I have one of these little pencils that print, um, or like a white pencil for sewing. I'm just gonna make a little mark at the top and at the bottom of my um, journal when I, or my cover when I have it lined up on the fabric just so that I know I'm cutting fabric that's gonna be wide enough to cover this spine and tape. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna bring it down here, make sure it's lining up up top and then the same for the bottom, make sure I have enough. And then I'm making a little mark at the bottom and then I'll just take my ruler just so that I know I have a nice straight cut, I'm going to just line up those little marks, those little white marks, and just do a quick little, a quick little line so that I'm, it's, a, it's basically a cutting guide so that I know I'm going to cut a straight line. And then I'm just using my pinking shears and I'm just going to cut right along that line. All right, so there is my spine fabric, as you can see. All right, now there's a couple ways that you can do this. You could just glue this down with the Fabrifix, which is perfectly fine, or you can use some Mod Podge. I always use Mod Podge when I'm doing fabric on my spine. And the reason I do that is I feel like it gives it a little bit more firmness to the spine so that I'm sure that it's not gonna be coming apart. So we're just using my Mod Podge. I'm also gonna grab a piece of wax paper to sit this on so that I'm not getting Mod Podge all over my mat. All right, so I'm just using a little foam sponge brush and a generous amount of Mod Podge. If you've watched any of my other DIY videos on journal making, you'll notice that I always make sure I use plenty of Mod Podge on my spine. And I just don't want that fabric coming loose and creating bubbles or pockets or anything like that. I like them to be able to stay together because you open and close a journal, you know, frequently if you're writing in it or you're putting pictures in it or whatever you're doing to it. Um, you just want it to be really durable. And I just find that a good coat of Mod Podge will make it super durable. Okay, so I'm paying close attention to the top and bottom of my um, spine. And it's okay if you get it on the front a little bit. The Mod Podge always dries clear. Okay, so I am going to um, start at the top and I'm just leaving like about an inch and a half or so of fabric um, to hang over the edge at the top. And I'm just lining it up so that way that fabric um, covers my tape and spine. And just with my fingers, I'm just pushing that right down, right into that Mod Podge. You can also use your bone folder. Once you've kind of got it pushed down with your fingers, you can use your bone folder to press it down even more. And again, you wanna concentrate on where the spine folds. You can kind of feel where the folds are and take that um, curved edge of your bone folder and just kind of push that fabric right down into that curved edge. So that way when you open and close the book, there's not gonna be any air bubbles that kind of grow underneath there. So you want it to be nice and sturdy. Okay, so once you get that all glued down, you can lift up your book, flip it over. And this is why I do it on wax paper because it the Mod Podge does get a little bit messy. And then we'll do the same thing on the inside. We'll just cover the paper that we put down on the spine because the paper that we put down on the spine covered the, the tape. The tape is underneath there. And just very generous with that Mod Podge down the center. 
Okay, so now I want to pull this up, but I have a little bit too much, so I'm going to take my scissors again and just cut off that excess. I don't want it to overlap that much, so I'm just cutting off the excess up at the top. And again, making sure it's nice and tight and that the edges are nice and glued down. Again, your fingers are probably the best way to push this fabric down in, so don't worry about getting Mod Podge on your fingers. It washes off really easily. And then, before I pull this top flap down, I'm gonna put another little bit of Mod Podge right over the top of my fabric where that little flap is gonna go down. And we're gonna glue that little flap right down. And I'm actually gonna take my Mod Podge and go right over the top of that. That way I am sure that that fabric is gonna stay down on the inside of this journal. Now you could cover this entire um, fabric piece with Mod Podge, but the Mod Podge will harden and make it um, very hard feeling. So if you want the feeling of the fabric, um, don't coat the whole thing with the Mod Podge. I do go around the edges of the fabric on the inside just to make sure they don't peel out. So I'll go over the edges a little bit, but I'm leaving that center um, uncovered by the Mod Podge because I, again, I don't want that to be really hard. I still want it to stay soft and feel like fabric. All right, so now that we have all of our Mod Podge on, we can lift up our little booklet. I like to fold it in now while it's wet and I like to set it upright like this and let it dry upright so that it's drying already folded. All right, if you open it, if you let it dry flat, when you go to fold it, you're gonna find that there's gonna be little bubbles in your fabric spine. So if you fold it ahead of time and let it dry like this, you could even put like a little clip or something on it to keep it together um, if you wanted to. I just think it's fine if you're, you know, just let it dry just like that, just so that it's somewhat folded and you should be good to go. But let this dry for a good hour or two before you start working on it further. Okay, so I have my little journal here. It's still a little bit damp, but it's mostly dry. Um, while I was waiting for this to dry, I went ahead and gathered up a bunch of papers. Now, you can use anything with a journal like this. You don't have to, you know, go out and buy any papers special or anything like that. Kind of the purpose of making a little journal like this is to use up papers that you already have. Um, or if you have done larger journals and you have scraps or things left over from other projects, use up the smaller scraps because you're gonna be making smaller pages. So you'll be able to use up all of those smaller pieces. What I went ahead and did, like I said, I went and gathered up a bunch of other papers that I have that I thought might work in this color scheme. It doesn't matter what kind of papers you use. You can use all lined paper if you want. You could use all copy paper. You can use construction paper. Um, again, go through your stash of paper and just pick out anything that you would like to try to incorporate into the pages of the journal. As you can see here, I've just got um, some vintage book pages. I've got some um, score pads. I've got some lined paper, some graph paper. I've got some notebook paper. Um, just some plain copy paper. Here's another book page, vintage book page. In addition to all of those pages, I have some cards. I've I pulled out quite a few greeting cards. Greeting cards are a great, it's a great reuse if you have cards sent to you or you've collect, collected cards. I know I get a lot of cards from the Goodwill bins. Use up those greeting cards. Um, I've just picked out that, some that I like the colors of and I might use those. You don't have to use everything. Just you know, make a little pile of things that you might use. This is just kind of like um, a card stock that was never used. Here's like a little envelope. Here's an, an invitation that had kind of some cool design. Um, more just cardstock that was made into an envelope. Here's some embossed paper, another fancy envelope. And then this is just a, another piece of scrapbooking paper that I liked the print and color of. So again, you can use anything 
that you have, just pull it aside and, you know, put it in a little pile. Now, I really love this vintage turkey print that is on one of the pages that is in the ephemera kit. And I want to use this as like the cover to my signature that's going to go in our little mini journal. Um, now, this is going to be a little bit too wide, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it down. So the height is fine, but the width is going to be a little bit too wide. So I am going to fold this in half. And again, just using my bone folder just to get a nice crease on this one. I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm going to just take my um, ruler and I'm just gonna measure with my book shut, I'm gonna measure um, from the inside here to the outside. And I've got about three and three eighths of an inch um, from the inside to the outside over here, if you can see. Um, not quite three and a half, about three and three eighths. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. I want it to be slightly smaller. So I'm gonna say three and a quarter. So I don't want any of my pages to be wider than three and a quarter, because that is gonna be, um, that's gonna allow the cover of my journal to be slightly larger than my pages. So three and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do with this is I am just going to quickly take a measurement on this. Now again, it is folded in half. So this will be the cover to my signature grouping. And again, I'm just going to mark it three and a half. I'm sorry, three and a quarter. Make a little mark at three and a quarter. Just double check that three and a quarter. I'll make a little mark at the bottom. Again, you can use your cutter. It's much easier to use a cutter that already has, um, you know, the ruler built in and you can just line it up, measure it and, and cut. But like I said, my cutter is getting very dull and cutting very jagged and I want a nice crisp cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my three and a quarter. Now, I'm also going to save these scraps, always save your scraps, and we'll just set that aside for now. All right, so this is gonna be basically the size of my pages that I'm gonna need for this little mini journal. So now what I wanna do is I want to, um, I'm gonna open this up like this, and I want to figure out what I wanna put for pages in here. Now, I like to do an assortment of different pages. I don't wanna do too many because I don't want it to be too thick, but I'm thinking maybe um, 10 to 12 pages, and then when they're folded in half, that would be 20 to 24 pages um, in the entire booklet, which is a, it's a good amount. So I'm gonna just take some of the other pieces of ephemera that I have. I have this, this actually comes in the kit. Um, we're going to fold this in half. So we'll put that, we'll put that. And then let's go in and look for some more of my paper. Let's do some writing paper. I like this green color. Let's just fold that one in half. We'll put that one in there. Let's do, how about this card stock? We'll put that one in there. It's a nice heavy piece. This one might be a good one to put. Oh, I, I think it'll be fine there. I was gonna say that might be a good one to put in the very center, um, but I think that will be okay there. All right, so let's do like maybe a book page. I'm just gonna cut right along this line right here. And I'm not gonna even cut, I'm gonna rip. I'm gonna just tear that off. So now I have a book page that I can put in there. Again, save all of your scraps. Save those scraps. How about this little 50th anniversary celebration? Doesn't matter what's on here. Doesn't matter if this is an anniversary booklet or not. You can cover this up with something else. You're just using up these pages. And if you like the picture on the page, then you don't have to cover it up. But we are just using up as much scrap as we have. So again, I'm just folding things putting them in and then again just making sure I have a variety of different pages and let's 
see, I have, I have this little page that comes in the kit. I think I'm gonna fold this in half and we can use this. It's a cute little page. Put that there. I also have this popcorn bag that comes in the kit as a piece of ephemera. I wanna make sure that this popcorn is shown. So I'm gonna fold it so that I know I won't be cutting that off. And we'll just put that in there as well, like that. So what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages so far. So let's do a couple more. Let's do, let's do this one. I'm just gonna rip this one in half. Let's do like, what about, about right here maybe? Sure. Another book page. We'll use that one. And then I like this embossed page. I think this might be really cute um, somewhere. So I am going to fold this in half. And I'm actually going to pull this down and out the bottom a little bit so I can cut that off. But we'll use this in here. This is a cute little envelope. Um, I like, I liked some of these cards. See, some of these cards were cute. Um, let's do this little contact score pad. Although I think that might be too small to put in there. Let's do a bigger page next. Next to the, um, let's do this one. This is going to be a really big page unless I tear this down. Let's tear this down a little bit. Tear that down just a little bit. Okay, we're almost full. We'll use this little one next. So you can kind of see I'm doing large, small, large, small. I'm trying to keep the variety, um, you know, so that you have a variety of different papers. This, this little one is really cute. I like that, but I think I want to do a bigger one first. Let's do that one. And I think one more and that's going to be it. So let's do this one. Let's do this one. There we go. All right. So I think we are good with our pages here. We have a lot of pages. All right, so now we have everything. I'm gonna fold everything shut and you can see I have a lot that's poking out um, that's gonna be way bigger than what we can use, but that is okay because we're gonna be trimming this all down. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that everything is tight to the corner um, in here. Make sure all of your paper is very tight to the corner. So push it all down to that corner or not corner, but push it all down to the seam because everything needs to be very tight and you don't want it loose. All right, so then once you have it tight, I take a clamp. So here's a, a nice tight clamp. I will take a clamp and just clamp it all shut because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim all of this excess paper off because we don't need all of this excess paper. So this is the fun part. I actually really enjoy trimming. So let's set all of this extra paper aside. I'm taking my ruler again, and just along the, the um, front cover, we know that this front cover is the largest the paper can be. So just along that front cover, we're gonna line up our ruler and take our craft knife and literally just start trimming this paper down. And you'll notice you'll be able to do a few at a time, push them away, go back in, cut some more. Take a few, pull them away. Continue doing this until you get all the way through. So we're getting all the way through and all that scrap paper that we're cutting off, we can reuse it for something else. all of it away. Almost 
on. All right, now we have our paper all trimmed to the right size and everything is in there nice and neat. And we got to do the same thing to the bottom and to the top. All right, so I have my signature all trimmed up, as you can see. So now all of my pages and my signature are all the right size and perfect to put in to my little journal here, as you can see. All right, so now that this is dry, we can move on to the next step. Before I go ahead and sew in my signature to my journal, I wanna decorate the cover just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to use this orange ribbon that I am including in the ephemera kit. Um, I think it matches nicely with all of the other orange ephemera. So I'm going to just attach this little bit of ribbon to the outside, just covering up this seam of the fabric here. And I'm going to do that with my Fabrifix. So just, I'm going to put a light coating of this Fabrifix just along this edge. And we'll take our ribbon and I'm just going to set it right down into that glue, holding it there just for a second. And then we're going to wrap it around the inside as well. So again, I'm just covering up this seam. All right, so I'm also adding just a little trim of rickrack on top of my ribbon. Just to kind of give it an extra little pop. I like that very kind of vintage look that it gives to this so i am just okay. wrapping it all the way around front and back as well okay yeah. so now that i have all of the decorating done to the spine of my little mini journal here i'm going to add some little corner protectors on and these ones are just kind of like um a brushed brass looking corner protector so i'm just going to put them right on my corner and I have some little pliers here and we're just gonna pinch those down. And I find that these just kind of add to the finishing of the journal so that it looks nice and finished. So I'll do the front cover and the back cover. While I am talking about hardware, I also like to add a little like brad ring to the spine of my journals so that way I can hang charms off of the edge. I always love to put charms on journals and mini journals. I think charms on any journal is just fun and very additive to any journal. All right so to put these on I am pinching these like brad arms together like this and then I'm going to open up my journal, take a little piece of cardboard because I'm going to be using my all to punch a hole into the top spine of my journal. Now I want to also make sure that I'm not going too close to the edge up here because when I open these little prongs back up again, if I open them up, they might stick out over the top. So I want to give it a little bit of room. Um, so I'm going to go down about probably three quarters of an inch before I poke my hole and I am just going to poke my hole right through. As you can see it went right through and then we'll take our little charm ring push that through and then open up those prongs and pry them back so that they stay now you can just leave this as is I actually sometimes like to take a little piece of the matching fabric that matches um, my spine fabric and you can just get like a little little tiny snippet of it i'm not gonna use much just a little snippet like a little one inch square and you can cover up that brad um, with that little snippet of fabric just so that way it's hidden and that way you don't see it. Now you could put this on before you glued the back down, the back fabric down. However, I found that that's a little bit harder to do. So I like to just do this little piece afterwards. So that way it's hidden behind a little piece of fabric like that. And I'll just use my Fabrifix for this. Now you have a hidden prong. You can't even tell that it was there. You have a hidden prong in the back and a cute little hanging tab or a hanging ring for some charms. All right, so now while we have our all out, 
um, we're gonna start poking the holes in our spine for our signature. Here's our signature, all held together and ready to get sewn into our little mini journal. Now I'm taking my ruler and I'm gonna go on the inside of my journal and I'm just gonna measure really quickly um, it's five and a quarter, so I know that two and five eighths, um, yeah, two and five eighths is going to be about half. So I'm just going to make a little mark at two and five eighths. Let me get my white pencil here. So we'll do a hole at an inch and a half from the center. And then we'll do another hole um, an inch and a half at the bottom from the center. So that should be about an inch top and bottom. So it's gonna go right underneath where that little prong is. There we go. So that, those little holes are gonna be where I'm gonna poke my holes for my signature to get sewn in. And I'm taking my cardboard. I'll just set this right on here. We'll just make a little hole on the, in the middle. We'll make a little hole at the top. All right, so now we have our little holes. You should be able to see them punched on the opposite side. I go in on the opposite side and just push them in and widen them a little bit. So that way they're not poking up and out. They're poking in, inwards on the inside. So there's my little holes for my signature. And we're gonna do the same exact thing with this signature. You can actually make little marks with a pencil if you need to. But we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna measure our signature. And that is measuring um, about five and an eighth. So we want two and a half plus a sixteenth. So that will be my center. So here's my center, my, making a mark where the center would be. And then it was an inch and a half from the center on either side is where we want another hole. So I'm, again, I'm just making tiny little marks on the outside of my the cover of my signature. I don't know if you can see them, but I just made a couple tiny little marks just so I have a guide on where to punch my um, all through. Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna open up our signature to the very middle of our, open it up to the very middle of our um, pages here. And I am gonna take my clamp and clamp it in the center here. There we go. So now all of the pages are, are where they should be. You can kind of go through now and just make sure everything is kind of lined up where you want it. So you can kind of flip through if there's pages that you want to move up or down. You can go ahead and do that now. But as you can see, I've got up all the pages look pretty good to me. All right, so now we want to start punching the holes through the center point to the center fold of all of our pages. And we can use these little lines on the top as kind of a guide. So I like to kind of hold my, um, I, don't, I don't ever punch my pages flat open like this. I always close um, my signature up as much as I can and kind of line up my holes um, or my all with the little marks that I made on the outside. And then I'm just going to carefully turn and push my awl to go all the way through those pages. So just very carefully turn and push that awl all the way through. Make sure you don't punch um, through your skin or your finger. I actually did that here on my finger one day and it hurt. Badly. So be very careful when you're doing this that your fingers are not in the way when you're pushing it through. And go slowly, and I find that rocking back and forth and twisting pushes that all through much better. All right, so we've got the center one done. And then let's find our top mark, which is right about here. So we're going to push through our top mark. Just 
just very carefully turning. You can, if you go slow, you can feel um, the tip of that all kind of starting to punch through if you keep turning and pushing. There it is. So again, we're just gonna push that through like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. All right, so now I have my holes all punched through my signature. Make sure that it is, you can see there's my holes right there. Make sure that that clamp is still on those pages, holding everything together where they should be. Okay, so I decided for this particular journal, I am gonna use a little bit of this orange Baker's twine. Now, because we're gonna be doubling this up, we're gonna need double the amount that we normally would need. If you were using something a little thicker than Baker's twine, you would only need about three times the length of your journal. However, since I'm doubling this up, I'm gonna use six times. I'm doubling up the amount of the width or the length. And then I'm adding a little bit extra just in case, because sometimes it's easier to tie if you have a little bit extra. All right, so now what I am going to do is I have um, kind of a large embroidery needle with a large eye. Now it is very hard to thread uh, baker's twine in a needle on its own. However, if you use one of these little needle threaders, they are very handy. You just put the needle threader through the eye of the needle and then you, one at a time, take one end of your baker's twine and go through that little eye of the needle threader. And then we're pulling that through our needle. So there is one, just like that. And then we're gonna pull it all the way to the end because like I said, we're doubling this up. Just wanna make sure you have an even amount on both sides. First of all, you wanna make sure all of your pages are going the right way, okay? So just double check and make sure everything is upright the way you want it and that nothing is upside down. I have done it upside down before and had to take it all apart. So make sure everything is going the right way. You're gonna take your needle, you're gonna go in through the center from the very center of your signature. You're gonna pull that baker's twine all the way through leaving a little bit of a tail and we're going to take this little tail and we're going to just stick it right under your clamp so I just kind of stick it there and have the clamp hold it in place I'm going to take the center hole of my cover I'm going to go through the center hole of my cover from the inside and I'm going to pull this baker's twine and my signature as tight as I can get it without pulling that twine out of the clamp and I'm gonna hold it right there okay all right now very carefully I want to make sure that I'm nice and lined up in the center very carefully I'm going to let go or pull my clamp off still pinching my um pages where they should be, I'm going to take my clamp and put it on the entire journal page now. So that way the clamp is holding the page and the signature all together. All right. That's just going to help you in the long run so that you get this threaded easily. All right. So now I'm going to go back in through the top. So here's the top hole. I'm going to go in through the top and I'm going to kind of peek and see where the top of my signature hole is sometimes the first time around it's easier to just go ahead and push that all the way through the top pull it all the way through and then go in through your signature hole getting these first holes started are sometimes a little tedious you kind of have to keep playing around with it until you can get it through the right spot but once you get it through the right spot then you can go ahead and kind of tighten it up. Okay, so now we are coming through the center of the top of our signature and we're gonna go back through the middle again. Back through the middle and back through the middle hole. And pull through. And now we're gonna go to the bottom. We're gonna go in through the bottom. Again, I am pulling it through the hole first and then I'm going to kind of um, maneuver it through 
my pages. And then I'm gonna pull it tight. And then we'll go back through the middle. Okay. We're gonna go down to the bottom or up to the top, but I guess it doesn't matter. I think we'll go up to the top first. Up to the top. Through the top pole. Now we're gonna skip the middle this time and just go through the bottom. Come out the bottom. Pull it tight. And now we're gonna go in, back in through the middle again. Last time. So here we come up through the middle. This is our last stitch. All right, we're gonna unclamp. We're gonna pull that baker's twine as tight as we can. And we're gonna make a knot. Pull that knot tight. And I always like to do a double or even a triple knot. Double will be fine. And then we will take our little scissors and just clip it off. And now our signature is stitched into our little mini journal. So now you can kind of just bend the pages a little bit. So that way it's a little stiff when you first get it um, stitched in, but you can see there's our little stitching on the spine. And now we've got all of our pages stitched into our journal. So it takes a little bit of practice stitching this, um, stitching signatures into a journal. But once you figure it out and once you figure out what technique works best for you, um, it's pretty quick. I can usually pump a few of these out in a couple of hours. All right, so there is our journal. So now we can start embellishing it. We can start adding um, a charm to the edge or to the side of it. It's just a fun little easy project.